We all love cycling and we all love riding our bikes fast. And I'm pretty sure it's the main reason why you're here now. But what if I told you there are some off the bike strength workouts that could help make you faster when you're out riding your bike? I know, seems too good to be true, but it isn't. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get faster out on the road without needing this. You could be new to cycling or you could be fairly experienced, but something we quite often see is people wondering why their rate of improvement or progression has started to plateau. It could be that you're riding a few times a week, but just not quite getting the improvements that you desire. And that is where strength training comes into it. It's about conditioning your body to better meet the demands placed on it when you're out riding your bike. Think of your body as a race car. You could have the most powerful race engine, but if you took that engine and placed it into a normal car with a normal chassis, it's not gonna be strong enough to harness all of that extra power. And it's that same principle that applies to our bodies. We could have the strongest legs in the world, but if our upper body and torso isn't conditioned and strong enough to harness all of that power, then it's gonna be wasted and isn't gonna be useful driving us forwards and faster on the bike. You could have your own generic exercises that you already do. But the clever people at Sufferfest know how important it is to do specific exercises tailored towards improving your cycling. So alongside their on the bike workouts, Sufferfest also have some strength training exercises and workouts to help guide you through. This is gonna improve your strength on the bike, make you faster. It's also gonna reduce your risk of injury and just generally improve your quality of life. It's been a number of years since I've done any off the bike strength exercises. So before I make a start, I caught up with Jeff Hubler, who's the head coach at Sufferfest Training and is also their strength and conditioning expert. So after hearing that I do zero off the bike strength training, he gave me a couple of pointers and bits of advice, which crucially are gonna help you guys at home too. First up, he said to plan for a small progression at a low trajectory that's gonna be sustainable. Next up was give yourself plenty of time to adapt to the training. You just can't rush these things. He said, you don't have to be sore to get any benefits. He said, so many times we see cyclists that want to improve but just dive straight in and try and do too much too soon. After finding it tough, they just never do it again. And then his final words of wisdom were to play the long game and accept that results take time and consistency. I'm gonna be starting at beginner level one. Even though I'm an experienced cyclist, this is the best place to start so that it has minimal impact and interference when I'm out on the road riding my bike. And this is gonna be the same for you guys as well too. But it's crucial to remember, you don't have to be sore to get the benefits. So I've just finished beginner level one workout, which was really good. You know, it's a nice balance of sort of achievable exercises that are also slightly challenging. And the good thing about the Sufferfest workouts is you don't need loads of fancy equipment. You just need a bit of floor space like I've got here. Uh, a gym mat's quite preferable to help keep you comfy. And then as the workouts progress, the only other equipment you're likely to need are a couple of water bottles that you can fill up with water and use those as your weight. So to help guide you through what to kind of expect as you do these workouts, I'm gonna pick out a few examples and talk you through them. The first exercise we're gonna do is the kneeling hip drive. This is designed to increase your hip flexibility and mobility and also get you to start to engage your core. So let's get into this position. So we've got our knee underneath our hips, one leg forwards like that, and then we're gonna have our hands over our heads with our thumbs facing backwards like this. So then as we drive our hips forward slightly, we can thrust our arms backwards. And this is designed to be quite a short movement that you can do over a number of times and repeat fairly quickly. So hands behind your head and then move your hips forwards like that. So then we do short, fast movements. We do that for a number of seconds following our on-screen instructions. So I can feel this on my right hand hip at the moment. So after following the on-screen instructions and the timer, I would then switch legs round. So then like this, 
this side to there and then it would work on opening this hip up. And the reason for doing this is because when we're on our bikes in our normal riding position, our hip angle here is normally quite closed. So this is trying to just open this up and combat that issue to try and make us a bit stronger and more flexible in that area. The next exercise I'm gonna demo is actually called bent leg tip of the hip. I picked this one out because it's got a fairly cool name, but also it's an exercise that incorporates using the water bottle. So like I mentioned earlier, this exercise is all about working on your single leg balance. So we're using our right leg here and then lift this one up. So we're practicing engaging our core muscles to keep ourselves nice and steady. And then with our opposite um, arm to leg, so this is gonna be my left arm, I'm gonna hold the water bottle out, balance there, focus on a fixed point, and then move the water bottle up and down like this. So all of these exercises are targeting movements that we wouldn't ordinarily do on our bikes. A lot of it's geared around extension of your posterior chain. So that's all of the muscles on the back of your body, all the way from your head down to your heels. A lot of the movements will work on rotation or counter rotation, as well as lateral sideways movements, like I was just doing then. So moving our arm out, sideways from our body. So I've got one more exercise to demo, so let's get on and do that next. Our final exercise I'm gonna demo is the hip hinge. This is another single leg balancing movement designed to help engage our core muscles and also to recruit our glute muscles. This is a muscle group on the bike which we don't tend to activate and use very well. So this is geared around trying to activate those muscles and engage our core to try and keep us nice and stable on the bike. To do this, we're gonna have one leg forward, so use my left leg, I'm gonna take my weight onto that. My right leg is gonna come slightly sort of off the ground, just up out of the way. Then by keeping a neutral spine, I'm gonna not bend my back, and then I'm gonna pivot from my hip, hence the name hip hinge. I'm gonna use my arms, I'm gonna go forwards, keep my back straight, then let my leg go backwards, just around there, keep a slight bend in this knee, and then I'm gonna slowly come back up to that starting position. And then we're gonna repeat that movement a number of different times. But the key with this is about doing it controlled and slowly. It's no good just doing it forward, bending, bending our spine. We wanna keep it nice and neutral, keep it locked in and straight, pivot only from our hip. So those are some good examples of off the bike workouts that you can do. But if you wanna see just how fast you can get out on the bike and make the best improvements possible, then you're gonna to have to head to sufferfest.com where you can actually do a free trial to gain access to all of their off the bike workouts as well as the on the bike workouts too. The main thing to remember with the off the bike strength workouts is to make them sustainable and repeatable. There's no point diving straight into the deep end on the highest level because you don't have to be sore and tired after every session to get the benefits. The most important thing is to take your time and use the correct technique. And all of these exercises are suitable to be done all year round to help mix up your training. And then they're gonna help make you faster on the bike, as well as build in a stronger body to stand you in good stead for the future. Hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a big thumbs up. And why not let me know your thoughts on off the bike workouts in the comments section down below. And if you'd like to find out more about training or subscribe to GCN Training and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release more helpful videos. See ya.